There is a lot to talk about how we should stray away from fossil fuels on the news every day. Frankly, it's been going on for decades now. The biggest reason for this is the growing danger of global warming. Recent Russian and Ukrainian crises have only intensified the discussion about switching to green energy. So why don't we do it? What keeps us from leaving oil and gas behind? The switch in and of itself is a great idea. Not only could it possibly reverse the ongoing climate change, but it would help to improve people's health in big cities and make a good impact on wildlife as well. However, there are serious problems with making a complete switch to renewables as of now. Green energy, which includes solar, wind, geothermal, hydropower, and a few others, stands around at only 29% of the world's energy generation in 2022. It's not hard to imagine what would happen if we had laid a heavy ban on fossil fuels right here and right now. Cities all over the world would lose power. People would freeze to death in the winter. Production facilities would stop. And don't even get me started on transport. Okay, so going full green right now is not really a viable option. When is it going to happen though? Scientists and politicians recognize the threat of climate change and that's why most countries have signed the famous Paris Agreement in 2016. The goal is to keep global warming below 2 degrees Celsius and preferably limit it to 1.5 degrees. The main way to do this is by investing in renewables and reducing the usage of oil, gas, and coal. In the long run, parties have agreed to push for reaching net zero by 2050, and this means a complete independence from fossil fuels. Overall, scientists see it as a feasible idea. Some countries already do well. In Norway, for example, 97% of electricity comes from renewable resources. They mostly rely on hydroelectric power, but also use thermal power plants and wind generators. Iceland, on the other hand, is almost finished with the switch. Geothermal energy provides around 65% of its supply. Now, these countries could probably switch to renewables only right now and be somewhat fine. The biggest issue for them, though, would be transport. However, not all countries move towards the switch at the same pace. In some places, it's harder to use green energy than others. Things like fossil fuel lobby groups, obsolete energy infrastructure, the lack of current materials needed to create the set infrastructure, and money constraints have all slowed down the progress. Another problem with the switch to renewable energies is the fact that global demand for electricity grows faster than what green energy can generate. The global supply of renewables grew by around 35 gigawatts from 2021 to 2022, but global power demand growth had went up by 100 gigawatts within that same period. The International Energy Agency claims that Despite strong growth of renewables, they'll be able to cover only around half of this projected growth in global demand by 2022. This makes lots of scientists worried that the switch is happening too slowly to stop climate change. The experts from IRENA claim that in order to limit the warming of the planet, the renewable sector would need to grow six times faster than it already is. And this prompts many politicians, as well as scientists, to reassess the potential power of nuclear and carbon capturing storage. So what do we have on our hands in the end? Well, there is good news, and there's bad news about our plan to switch to green energy. The good news is that we are on our way. The bad news is that we might not be moving fast enough. While the outcome of our struggle does depend largely on politicians and corporations alike, it's a global problem that we're talking about. If all fails and the oceans rise, rivers run dry and forests burn down, it would be a damn shame for everyone. What you and I could and should do 
is to keep the problem in the spotlight and not let it be concealed by those who deny its existence. By supporting scientists who try to solve the biggest threat in human history, voting for politicians who recognize it, and by doing our own tiny parts, like sorting the garbage or choosing electric cars and solar panels, we'll be able to make a difference. Will it be in time? Only time will tell, I guess. And I really do hope it will. That's all for this one, though. See you next time.